Hi there and welcome back to the second video of, I think, two videos um, where we go into the very basics of Hypermesh. Today we want to address the topology optimization and let me just quickly, very quickly introduce you to topology optimization if you've never heard anything about it. Topology optimization is a kind of optimization where you want to get a structural proposal from an optimization algorithm with the definition of a design space and an optimization problem. And this proposal can be any structure, topologically completely different, you don't care, um, but it has to be in a design space. And this design space are all the possible variants you could think of, the outer boundary of the optimization problem, you could say. Now that sounds maybe a bit complicated, it gets, uh, gets uh, more clear in a minute. Let's say you have, um, you want to have a cantilever beam, but you don't have to make it as a solid bar. It's a race of material maybe. You could use it with a 3D printed structure, more lightweight, and, but you want to have it as stiff as possible with maybe a third of the mass, like 30% of the, of the initial mass. To um, define this, we go uh, and define it like, like in the following. You have to find your hypermesh model. If you don't watch the video, if you didn't watch the video of how we created this model, please do. It's the basic. Um, and having defined this model, you, and let me just quickly save that. Let's analyze this model. Um, because I will uh, maybe publish this um, this model, then you can uh, use it as a jump start from there. You have to have this model right here. So you have your load step, you have your load cases, you have your uh, mesh, your material law, your properties all set up. What you now need is the optimization problem. And in the analyze this radio button, you have this button called optimization. Pressing that brings you to a whole panel, which is not just optimization for the topology optimization, but the complete optimization panel. So there's topography, free size, free shape, and all the other stuff. But now let's go into the topology optimization. It's the most left, most um, top button, also in the top left corner. And now you, you have a different menu. You have also radio buttons on the left. We go to create and choose a name, top up seems legit. And then you have to choose a property. So if you want to have a topology optimization just operating in a specific area, you have to design a part, a component, which has a one property and another component with it, which has a different property. And by selecting just one property in here, you're telling the solver that it has to be just in this area of the model. For our case, it's, it doesn't matter. We just select the only property we have by left clicking in here, pressing select and clicking create. Um, make sure that you have P solid in here. And like I told you the last time, please, please, please look at the left bottom corner when pressing stuff. You have the design variable has been created. This means that all went well. If I have select, didn't select the property in here, or if the property has a different card image than the type in here, it would give me an error, but on the bottom left. And it's, it's, it's kind of easy to oversee that. So please look at the bottom left. Pressing create once more, you see no properties have been selected, right? So, okay. Pressing return, we go with the complete um, defaults in here. Um, we don't make anything fancy in, in this tutorial. Um, we go into the, the responses. Responses is the second thing. And uh, it's all set in here. I don't want this that it is set in here. Normal, normally it's like this. You have nothing written in here. You have the response type mass. But what you want to do is you want to maximize the stiffness, which is the equivalent to minimizing the compliance. So we choose to 
a model the compliance or we want to get the response compliance. Um, I name it just compliance, maybe RSP in front of it that I know it's a response and choose the type here to be compliance. Note here that if you have different load steps, more than one, you have to use the weighted compliance. Yeah, I, I will not go into the theory about that in this video, but just be, um, be advised that it is the weighted compliance for multiple load steps and the compliance you can use for a single load step. Okay, so you have to compliance total, all right, and just click create and always look on the bottom left. Response record has been created, so that's okay. Pressing return or no, I have to create a second response. The second response I name volume frag, if I could have spelled it correctly. Okay, we uh, RSP volume frag and type for, um, of course, volume frag, which is the fraction of design, optimized design volume divided by the total volume. So if, if the solver just has to use 10%, this number would be 0 0.1. Um, okay, I will go into this in a minute. Hit create. A response record has been created. You can also see it in the model browser here. Um, and now I press return and now you're in into the, the button just below that. It's a deconstraint button. So we want to, uh, for the solver that it can use only, let's say 30% of the material, of the initial material. So um, I would say this is a DC for design constraint. Um, what's called volume frag. And we want to have it an upper bound of 0 0.3. And the response affected by this constraint is the volume frag. Hitting create, looking at bottom left, and you see you have a constraint. That's good. Now we just have to one, one more step. We want to have an objective. We want to minimize the compliance as said. So I hit objective here. Minimize is all already selected and the response is also reselected. No, wrong one, the RSP compliance. And now you can see uh, you have load step in here, a selector. If you hit create right here, no load step has been selected. So please select the load step. And you can only select one here. So if you have multiple load steps you want to optimize for, um, this is the point where you realize that you should have used weighted compliance. Okay, but for, for us it's okay. Hit create and we have our objective and this is it. We have our optimization ready for us to go. So let's recap. For the optimization, <clears throat> we had a finite element model with mesh, with load collectors, with load steps. Um, and now what we modeled is responses, two of them. The first one was compliance, the second one was volume frag. And then we had a deconstraint, a design constraint for the volume frag, which limits the solver to just put 30% of the material available. And with what objective? That's the second thing we, we did after the responses. We put on a objective, minimizing the compliance. So the solver has to minimize the compliance by using 30% of the material. That's it. Now to start the optimization, we go uh, just the same way as with the analyzers. With the analyzer radio button, we have this obdestruct in here. And let me just quickly um, use this a second. Obdestruct model, FAM, but maybe save it. Then it's our set of these struct .hm. And if I click on Optistruct again, I have the path already set for me. Now it's important the run options should be optimization. And yeah, I will just introduce here a parameter NT12 or minus NT12. There's a space in between here. Be uh, precise about this here, because if you do this wrong on the options, it will not start. 
So it's it's telling the solver to just use 12 threads. And with the memory options, should be okay. I'm pressing Optistract. Should run the optimization. Now this takes a while, but I think not too much because it's a rather um, small value. Um, you could look into the out file, for example, and see a bunch of uh, informations about the iterations. I will not go into this um, more deeply um, in this video. But what I wanted to point out is here you can look at the graph and here you can see how your objective is progressing. So in this case, objective function, minimize compliance, you can see, ah, it's decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. And you see that it's kind of, it's kind of working, right? Um, the solver should minimize the compliance and I think it's done already. So just hitting results here or pressing results in here. Um, you have now two windows. That's that's important. You have two files. Let me just quickly. No, that's the wrong folder path. No, here. Um, you have two models. So we had this Optistruct um, model, which we pointed here. Let me just quickly filter that for you. So we have two models, right? Um, the first thing we have is the underscore des.h3d and the second thing is the underscore s1h3d. If we had multiple load steps, we had a s2, s3 as the number of load steps. But the des is the design proposal, the structural proposal of the topology optimization and the s1 to sx. Those are the values for your load steps. So there's no element stress um, whatsoever in the DES H3D. So uh, keep that in mind. Now what's open in here is the underscore DES. And if you right click on here, then you have the S1. Let's start with the DES. You have a contour panel in here and you want to um, see the element densities. Well, all 0 0.3. Well done solver. Now. Um, you have to select the latest iteration for it to be displayed in here. So select 24 and now you can use the ISO panel. So contour and ISO. ISO panel just also for the densities and hit apply. And now you have the slider and you can see, yeah, sort of um, the structural uh, proposal. I will not go into the how to geometric, uh, geometrically reconstruct this in here. Just a quick tip, if you want to export this, um, this structure as STL, you can do that with tools, export, ISO surface, and then choose a yeah, random location, press OK, and then it's exported. Just a quick tip off on here. There, there are much more um, um, detailed um, uh, ways of uh, exporting the geometry, but we will not go into this at this stage. So the second one is um, the S1 and we can displays, uh, display the element stresses, for example, like we did in the last, uh, last uh, video. But you notice here that you have two um, values. So the second one as uh, second iteration, the last iteration is the final one. You can see sort of the shape in here. It's a quick tip here. If you want to display here um, the shape, how it's displayed in here. It's not entirely possible, but you could use the ISO panel with the element stress and set it to a very low value. Then you have sort of the shape because if you have a density of a zero, then you don't have much stress in it. So the ISO panel for stress works kind of as the ISO panel with the element densities where you can limit in here. Um, another quick tip, if you don't want the um, averaging method in here to be displayed, just select none, hit apply, and then you have sort of the same thing as you have in here. All right, um, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.